We've all overindulged, but the good news is that Chris Powell says you can hit the rewind button after overeating. So I want him to help us all of us understand what happens to your body coming off a binge. Nothing like having somebody you really used to look up to really let you down. You gotta be so good that they can't ignore you, especially the ones that ain't done shit for you. Yeah, you know exactly what I mean. They stab you in the back and then they ask why you're bleeding. I don't trust words. I trust actions. I don't care what you heard. I'm not slacking. My name is Alan Roberts. This is Everyday Day Fitness. Like, subscribe, click the notification bell right over here and share my videos. Subscribe to my second channel, Alan Roberts, and my opinion of course is coming linked above and below at the end and all those places. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. That was Dr. Oz interviewing Chris Powell, and it almost brought me to tears. Chris Powell is somebody I have looked up to for years. He is somebody that I really aspired. I, I, I loved his show, The Extreme Weight Loss Show. Uh, when I really first started getting interested in weight loss and helping and coaching people for weight loss, it is a show I look to because it was very commonsensical in the contrast to other weight loss shows on TV. Like there was The Biggest Loser, which was basically like systematic torture of obese people. And then a Chris Powell show where he taught them healthy behaviors and he held them accountable and, you know, things I've patterned myself after, you know. And then I see him going on Dr. Oz talking about how you can reverse the effects of a binge. Uh, totally, it's completely contra to his previous message. Like, he, he, he used to talk about healthy relationships with food and making sure you avoided those things. And to his, a huge portion of Chris Powell's audience are people that have unhealthy relationships with food. And now he is on Dr. Oz's show, I'm sure after cashing a check with a lot of zeros on it, uh, talking about how you can reverse the effects of it instead of avoiding it. Like when, when it comes to binge eating people, here, here's reality. Avoid it. Uh, there, there's, there's no like don't, if, if you've if you've binged eat if you do have a, a, an occasion where you binge figure out how to not ever do that again like figure out the steps that, that led to your binging whether it be stress whether it be not preparing for uh for your day properly like you you don't have any other food around and then you eat something that triggers you and you, you eat don't eat your trigger foods understand if you ha are binge eat if you are known to binge eat that is a unhealthy relationship with food you, I mean, this, this is insane. This is like basically saying like, drink some water after you smoke that pack of cigarettes to negate the pack of cigarettes. It's stupid. Um, and it is completely, completely, completely contra to his previous message. We're going to go through this video a little bit and just point out some of the finer points, but I find this saddening. It really is like this. You know, dude, if, you know, I mean, Chris Powell, if, if you ever do watch this, which is highly unlikely he will, but if you ever do watch this, no, I mean, like, don't you feel any kind of responsibility to the people that have looked up to you? Like, you've helped obese, morbidly obese people get to healthy weights. So that means other morbidly obese people watch you. Because I know this, they watch me. And if they watch me, they damn sure watch you. Because you're a lot prettier, younger, better looking, better built, and, you know, more money and famous and on TV. And I'm just in my fucking room or in my fucking car. So I know that they watch you more than they watch me. So they look up to you and they listen to everything you fucking say. And then you're going to go ahead and say, yeah, you know, if you binge eat, you know, just drink some tea. Well, let's take a look at the scale and let's let that tell the tale, all right? So here's what's going to happen. After a major binge, say, say you go big on a Saturday with some pizza, some soda, some ice cream, all this other good stuff. You step on the scale, you're weighing 153 pounds. Before you go out that night. This is before, yeah, before okay. all, all the all damage right. occurs, okay? okay? Pizza and ice cream and all that, blah, 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 it's bullshit. Yeah, this is how you know I'm a fan because on one of his episodes of the Extreme Weight Loss Show, he actually ate fast food, like like junk food, for like a meal or two, because one of his one of the people on the show wanted him to just, just and he wanted to see what it was like. And the man vomited. He got sick. He doesn't eat junk food at all. Like he he eats very 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 clean. So him making it seem like it's no big deal, you know, to people that have binge eating disorder is bullshit. It's just fucking bullshit. You know that the scale's going to go up a little bit because well you're, you're certainly feeling it, right? The next day, so you step on the scale. Okay, it says 155, a couple pounds. You're like, okay, I, I got away with it. Now, granted, I'm going to shoot you straight here. Those calories that you consumed, they already found a home. They are partitioned <laughs> into muscle and fat. There's some sitting in there with fecal matter and all that other good stuff. With fecal matter and all that other good stuff. Dude, how big was that check? And you're thinking, okay, we're good to go. But then, and I'm sure this will resonate with a lot of us here, you step on the scale the next day and you're like, w w wait a second, it just went up again. What, what's going on? Okay, now I got a diet. He's just so cheery about this. That actually, here's another likely scenario there, Chris. What happens is the person binge ate on the first day and then they saw the scale and they saw it go to 155 and they said, well, I've seen an episode of Dr. Oz recently where Chris Powell, who's known for helping obese people, 
uh, I saw where he said it can you can reverse binge eating. So I'll just really work look at that after I'm done binge eating again today. And then they get into binge eating the next day. And then they binge eat the next day. Because anybody that binge eats does not have a healthy relationship with food. And you know this. Right? How many of you have done this? You're like, okay, now i got to start cutting back. Now i got to pull carbs. Now i got to do all this other stuff. And then you're like, okay, maybe the next day, okay, I ate really well. And then what's going to, oh my gosh, <laughs> what's going on? Yeah, hilarious, Dr. Oz. This person with an eating disorder has gained more weight. Yeah, that's hilarious. So what happened, if we re rewind back to day one, when you binged, when you ate all that food, there's a lot of sugar and there's a lot of sodium in there as well. When you ingest all of that, your body's going to go through about a three-day water wave where it's simply retaining and retaining and retaining. Chris Powell, everybody, has helped people lose hundreds of pounds. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds has helped individuals not just together, but individuals lose hundreds of pounds. Is now saying it's just water weight. What happens when a person, you know, when you go back, what happens when a person binge eats is that they normally binge eat the next day too, asshole. You might have gained a fraction of a pound of fat with all the calories that you consumed. Yeah. But when you step on the scale and you see it go up five or six pounds, you freak out for three to four days. By Tuesday, you forgot about what happened on Saturday. No, Chris, they haven't forgotten what's happened on Saturday because they probably repeated it because most people with binge eating disorder don't just binge one day, especially when weight loss specialist Chris Powell is telling them that it's just water weight. Yeah. That's where we go wrong. And then now let's go toward Wednesday and you're thinking, oh my gosh, because I cut calories on Tuesday, da 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 da, now it's starting to help me out. No, it's just the water wave coming right back down yeah. into Thursday and then that's why Friday you think you can binge again. <laughs> No, Chris, because they've normally binge eat for days and days and days. And that we'll take the 153 pound example of a binge eater you're using, and because there are some. But let's be real: if they go on, if they binge eat once, they normally binge eat multiple days in a row. It is a disorder. You minimizing it, you making it seem like it's not a big fucking deal, is a big fucking deal. You, a well-respected person in the field of weight loss, minimizing binge eating in this way for a paycheck is fucking disgusting to me. So I, I suspect you, sh you should start this the next day, right? Absolutely. Immediately after it happens. Yep, you bet. Because you know it's gonna be about a three day water wave that we're trying to prevent here. We can actually turn that into two or even one day. You could start this in the unlikely case that the person still isn't binge eating. Just real. How about this? How about instead of starting this, you sit yourself down, maybe talk to somebody, find out what triggered you to binge eat. What caused you to overindulge in food? Because it's not even the foods I'm talking about. It's not even ice cream or pizza or whatever. It is binge eating that stuff, binging it, eating to the point where you can barely move. That is an unhealthy relationship with food. That you should examine in yourself. If you binge eat, the next day you should sit down and be like, how can I avoid binge eating again? Not how do I deal with the fucking water wave? If the right methods are followed, okay? So right off the bat, you know that you've taken in a lot of sodium. Your body's going to try to retain a lot of water for those three days. So we need to start, number one, flushing your body with the right amounts of liquid. So Chris Powell is about to be on my monitor talking about a tea to flush your system. I'll take a gallon of water and I'll just brew up some dandelion root tea. It's amazing stuff. It's a natural diuretic. It's really easy and... and uh, and gentle on the system. And gentle on the system. Many people that have tried dandelion root would definitely disagree with that. But you don't do anything after you binge, Chris, because you probably don't binge unless a lot has changed again from what I said from when you used to be on the show because you literally threw up when you ate McDonald's. Now, was that a lie or is this a lie? You don't even have to have caffeine first thing. Nope, no caffeine first okay. thing. I just start sipping on oh, that. I see you saved the caffeine for nine. Yes, <laughs> you bet. And once again, that caffeine, it is a, it's a mild diuretic and a mild laxative as well. So, hey, granted, especially from a binge, you might have a little bit of extra fecal matter left over. So what is with the weird ass smile when he talks about fecal matter and laxatives and stuff? Like what, what is up with that? Uh, anyway, it, here, here's my issue, right? First of all, I'm very disappointed in myself for even, like, I seriously did used to look up to him. I, I aspired to, uh, I, I, I thought it would be very cool to help people in the way he does. And I still do. In the, in the way that in my mind he used to help people, that is my ultimate goal. To help very big people get to healthy weights. Teach them healthy lifestyles to the point where they can live, uh, you know, they can live a great life. A great long life escaping the prison of obesity. 
That is what I love. It really upsets me when I see somebody that is well-respected in that field, well-respected in the field of weight loss, to the point where many, many, many people look to them for advice, spewing bullshit on Dr. Oz, spewing bullshit for a paycheck. That is very upsetting to me. It reminded me, and th I, I should thank you, because it did remind me how ridiculous, how fucking ridiculous people are in the fitness industry. Again, I used to, I made this channel to talk about the ridiculous fitness stuff that you saw on YouTube Fitness. That's nothing. YouTube Fitness is nothing compared to what the big names of fitness actually spew. Chris Powell, I thought you'd be the exception to it, but you are definitely not. And that's just my two cents in the matter. My name is Alan Roberts. Hit me up on Instagram at Everyday Day Fitness. Hit me up on Twitter at Everyday Day Fitness. I'm also on Facebook at Everyday Day Fitness. And on the internet at EverydayMDayFitness.net. I am really disappointed in you, Chris. Goddamn.